Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about selling your vintage Volkswagen on the internet or any classic car for that matter. Uh, these tips that I'm going to give you could pertain to any classic car across the board. Uh, doesn't have to be for necessarily for vintage Volkswagens, but uh, for you fellows out there that don't know, I have a, a VW restoration shop here in uh, New York and I've uh, been operating for uh, about 10 years. Uh, but I started my business on eBay and uh, I even used to sell other classic cars for folks on eBay on consignment uh, just to generate income in the very beginning to build myself up. Now I have an art background so I have some skills in photography and videography and I even uh, did some writing and directing for 10 years with uh, ind independent film production. So I have a general idea on how to set things up. So I have five tips for you and I want to showcase them to you guys and, and I'm sure there's some other tips out there that you guys can chime in on and you can write in the description below. I'm open to feedback and to hear what additional uh, ideas people have to selling on the internet today. So to that end, let's get to it. I got a list here that I want to talk to you about. So let's see, uh, number one, I would say, is before you even get started, before you even take out any technology or even looking at any of the sites to sell your car on, is find out what your market is for your vehicle. Um, so there's many avenues you can take with that. You can look at the online auction houses like Barrett Jackson if you want, RM auctions, some of those other high-end auctions, but again, take them with a grain of salt because those auction sites are about presentation and presentation goes a very long way when it comes to selling your vehicle. Um, and a lot of times at those auctions, the, the vehicles go for sometimes way more than they should have, uh, but sometimes they also go for way less depending on your timing. Um, but a great way to know your market is collectorcarmarket.com. I've been going to that website for years now. I mean, you also have Haggerty, you got Kelly Blue Book, you got NADA guides to, to really see and do your homework and, and kind of average it out and see what the cars are going for. Uh, if you go to a site where they're selling the cars and you see the prices on there, you got to take that also with a grain of salt because those are what the guys are asking for. It's not necessarily what they're going for. And if you see a car listed for many months, uh, and, and it's still sitting there at that price point, um, good chance that that is not what the market is asking or there's maybe something wrong with the car. So definitely check on your market. eBay still has completed listing search uh, on ebaymotors.com, which is a great idea to see if your car, your kind of car is doing well on eBay. Um, uh, for the Volkswagen folks, you have uh, the Samba.com, which, tend, which tends to be overinflated a lot. Um, it seems like a lot of the free sites out there where you can list for free, uh, the pricing can be kind of high, except for, say, Craigslist. Craigslist seems to be still the uh, garage type or backyard style type of listing, uh, so you, you see some reasonable prices there. Um, but for the most part, you want to check your market. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, um, I would say right underneath that, before you even get going again, <laughs> is your presentation. You gotta have that set up before you even uh, start taking photos and stuff. Make sure you are a good shot. Uh, I know we have great phones today. I have a Google Pixel 2 out now and has got an incredible camera now. So the phones, the smartphones have really done wonders when it comes to pulling out a camera out of your pocket. But it also comes down to framing the shot. It also comes down to lighting the shot. Um, sometimes you need to hire someone to take those photographs and I, that's what I used to do. People used to hire me to do photographs of their cars. Um, I still see photos online where they're in a garage and there's absolutely no lighting and even if the lights are on, fluorescent lighting does not give the true indication or color of what the vehicle is. And so many times the car is stuffed in the garage and there's no way to get around it and the pictures are so tight. and you know, you got to pull that car out of the garage if you really want to get a good price or, you know, or to, to sell the vehicle. And I always like to put my cars in a decent backdrop. Presentation is key. And if you put the effort into good pictures, uh, that means, you know, uh, the buyer looks at the seller as a serious seller and uh, gives a little more credibility. Natural light, I think, is the best. And also it's the time of day. You know, many times I like it when it's just about noon or maybe a little uh, around two, three o'clock when the sun's coming down and, you know, even if you have it a little overcast, but the sun is out. So it's giving that sun a buffer. It's not such a harsh uh, light. Um, you know, I've gotten criticized in the past that I, people think I doctor my photos because I have sparkles on my, on my photos. And it's so not true. If you have any idea or any knowledge of photography, that is the time of day that I go out in the sun 
it's my lens, it's my iris, shutter, aperture, all that kind of stuff is what attributes to those sparkles and the shine. I do, you do not doctor your photos in Photoshop when it comes to selling your vehicle. They got to be true photos. And if anybody wants to uh, test me or test me and see my raw photos, I can show those raw photos with those sparkles on it. They are not Photoshopped. So to the future uh, seller out there, do not use Photoshop uh, to doctor any photos at all. Let it be the natural shot and uh, that gives you some more credibility there. One other thing I'd like to point out when it comes to taking photos of your vehicle is and what most people are doing today. I still don't know why. There's still kind of old school thought and I know it's kind of convenient when you're kind of holding your phone here. If you're using your phone, please shoot wide. Okay, there's something called VVS, Vertical Video Syndrome. I see people who are still taking videos of their cars and throwing them into an auction or throwing them into an ad and the video is vertical. I can't stand seeing video with vertical on my widescreen monitor. I have sometimes my laptop hooked up to my 65 inch TV and I'm seeing a vertical video like this. It is horrendous. I, when you're shooting video with your phone, turn it wide. Who does not want to see a wide shot? Fill that screen. Stop thinking social networking that it works better for that. We don't want that. We want to shoot wide presentation is everything even when it comes to photos shoot wide do not shoot vertical I've seen guys before where their whole ad on eBay they have a vertical shot do not do that I know it's convenient because the buttons down at the bottom but turn this wide please now when it comes to video I if you want to add video I think it is essential today I mean today we live in a video world and again you got these phones at your fingertips that are now shooting 4k or a great high definition video my Google Pixel 2 now shoots 4k shoots 60 frames a second so you have super smooth stuff and it look and you can really bring the clarity out and the, and the quality out of the vehicle uh, so but again if, if you can hire someone that's got a like a halfway decent uh, camcorder uh, today I'm using now the AX53, the Sony AX53 I'm shooting on right now. It's a beautiful camera. It's got beautiful stabilization on it. And if you're going and walking around the car, it keeps things stable. The problem is with these phones is the stabilization is not the greatest. So there's still a lot of shake. And plus, when if you're miking anything up, you know, you, get, you might get wind noise uh, and, and things like that. So once you start getting into video, you know, uh, it, it would be nice if you had some editing skills to sit down at an edit suite. Uh, or, or a basic editing program like Adobe Premiere Elements or something where you can kind of cut together the video uh, as opposed to uh, just shooting it a one long take. But you could do that and that's fine. But uh, video does add a lot of quality to selling your vehicle. Okay, so I would say that number three would be where to sell. There is an, an array of sites out there where you can sell your vehicle. Uh, for the Volkswagen guys, you got the Samba, which I think is a saturated platform right now. Uh, and I do feel that a lot of the prices are inflated. Um, so just be careful of that. Many of the free sites where you can list for free, people are kind of inflating the prices. I don't, I don't get that. Um, you still have eBay. I still think eBay is a good option. If you're gonna to go to eBay, what's great about it is that you can, you know, it's, it's under a time constraint. Okay, so people have to make up their mind. You know, you, you, you try to get rid of the tire kickers. You're gonna get a lot of watchers. People just love to tire kick and watch and watch and watch. Um, but you, go, you gotta figure that this, there's gotta be a few buyers in there that are definitely eyeing it. The thing is with eBay, and still which is plagues them, is that you can have a non-paying bidder. I used to go through that towards the later uh, years when I was on eBay, uh, after I sold the vehicle, uh, the buyer either would not come through or make up some sort of an excuse uh, that they made a mistake and there really was no recourse to going after that buyer and it's kind of a negative when that happens because then when you relist now that looks negative people think there's something wrong with the car yada 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 it's a big psychological platform on there so you have to really know what you know how to list correctly Still, over 90% of the auctions on eBay Motors are listing with a reserve, and that is the killer. If you list with a reserve, most of the time it's not gonna sell. 90% of the time it does not sell. I had the most success listing with no reserve, starting the auction, say if I have a 1965 Beetle that I'm gonna sell, I start the auction at $19.65. And I know that sounds crazy, People thought that was, that was insane to do that and no reserve. But you know something? When you start at that low, 
you get bids because you're going to get these jokes that come in and say, yeah, I'll pay $100, I'll pay $200, $300, and not realizing when the more bids that you have in that auction, now all of a sudden it adds credibility. So when you got 30, 50 bids on a car and it's racking up, that adds a huge amount of credibility. It's a hot item, it's a hot auction, and people gravitate towards it. So when you list on eBay, that is my recommendation. But again, you got to do your homework on what the market is bringing. So if you're saying I want $25,000 for my car and the market's only bringing 15, you're not going to list on what you're not going to list on eBay uh, if it's going for the, that price on eBay. So you got to do your homework prior, you know, and that's why I used to do that and I made sure that the cars I listed, I knew they were going to either meet or exceed what I wanted. Uh, for the vehicle. So definitely uh, you got to do your homework with that. But you know when it comes to selling on eBay, it comes down to title, it comes down to timing. You got to use the right keywords, you got to time it right. I still see guys listing their auctions and they're ending on a Friday morning, they're ending on a Friday night, Saturday morning. Nobody's, nobody's on. The traffic is, you got to do your homework on when the traffic is there. I still think the highest traffic point on eBay is a Sunday night, Monday night, um, sort of thing. If you're in New York, like where I am, you want the auction to end around, say, 11, 10, 11 o'clock at night, our time on the East Coast, because you got to factor in the West Coast. Um, so these are factors you got to add into it, and it all plays into the success on eBay. <laughs>